تمام اتفضل يا فندم شكرا السلام عليكم السلام عليكم Uh, my talk today about intramedullary nailing, the biomechanics evaluation, uh, evolution and the challenge. Uh, my uh, objective of this uh, talk it is uh, to know the history, development and evolutions, type one the classification, biomechanic indication, the contraindication of using intramedullary nailing, special circumstances and the recent advance. The goal of operative fracture fixation is to stabilize the fracture bone to enable the fast healing of the injured bone and to return to early mobility and full function of the injured extremities. But the goal of fracture management itself is decrease the pain, correct the deformity, increasing the chance of the fracture to heal. So why we are using the uh, implant? Uh, the, this implant has to provide a temporary support and to maintain the alignment during the fracture healing and to allow for early uh, for function rehabilitation. The biological of, uh, bi uh, and the biomechanical of the fracture healing, for the fracture healing, we the bone need uh, a certain degree of stabilization, which means this uh, mechanical stability, often preservation of the blood supply with biological or hormonal stimulation in order to unite it with this uh, called the biological, um, uh, uh, biological uh, So for the fracture, the prerequisite for the fracture to be healed, they need the biological and they need the stability. For, so the very question for the bone healing is adequate blood supply, which is mean biological, and adequate mechanical stability, which is the stability of the fracture. The medullary fixation, uh, the uh, advantage is the minimum invasive, no direct exposure of the fracture and load sharing devices. For the stability, which, which can be absolute stability, the rigid fixation uh, that does not allow any micro electric stability of fixation provided providing uh, uh, by internal or external splinting of the bone. So for the, the biology of the bone healing, we have two types of healing, which is an absolute uh, uh, primary bone healing, which is due to absolute stability. And this can be done by reversion or remodeling, which uh, characterized by minimal callus. And we have a relative stability, which is characterized by secondary bone healing, which is uh, uh, characterized by exuberant callus. So the fixation stability in reality, uh, if you have an color, this means this uh, rate of flexibility, like intermodal nail or not, no color, this is absolute rigidity, like a screw plate and compression plate. If we go to the history, we found that the Egyptian mummies, there is an prosthetic pain in 3000 years of the mummy discovered. And uh, this is an X-ray which has been discovered that they can, uh, they was using the modular fixation. But in the recent years, we in 16th century, uh, in uh, Mexico, aesthetic uh, physician have replaced the wooden stick into the modality canal of the patient with long bone for non-union. In the 80s, ivory bags were inserted into the modality canal of non-union. In 1970, Hog, uh, Hogland uh, in the United States reported the uses of autogenous bone uh, as intramodality implant. In 1930, in the United States, Rush and Rush uh, described the using of a stem and pin. But in 1930, Ms. Peterson reported the success of stainless steel nail for treatment of fracture. In 1950, uh, 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 the evolution of Kunscher nail. And Graham Kunscher was born in Germany in the uh, 19th century. Graham, uh, Graham uh, Gerard, uh, the word of the V nail, uh, the lower limb shape, and uh, the Y nail. His method was based on two principles: uh, uh, stability of the, uh, the fix, uh, stability of fixation, stable fixation, and the closed nailing. Then uh, Hanson and the street they developed the diamond shaped nail, and then uh, followed by Lotus, who designed three phalanges, femoral and the tibia nail. Uh, there is another, uh, this is the clover leaf and the diamond shaped the pattern. Schindler designs his okay. bone, which is a double and an even nail. Table uh, on the screen. Dr. Hassan, let me call you muted, if you want. Monday and Bamboo. Uh, 
uh, invited the interlocking screws, introduced the transfixation intermodal in 1953. Naming of the tibia is introduced by Herzig in 1950. Livingstone bar introduces as a short pin pattern pointing nail at both ends. Now we go for the fracture. For, the, for fracture stability uh, by one of the two systems, either compression or splinting. The intermodality fixation, in which, which uh, doing an internal splinting, it is a splintage. Uh, micro motion between the bone and implant is allowed. Relative stability without interfragmental compression. And the entry point is away from the fracture site, so they preserve the hematoma and always using a closed reduction and, uh, and fixation, which is mean biological preservation. So it is intramodal in name, it is a relative stability, and uh, uh, it is intramodal uh, splint. But less likely to, to break up uh, with repetitive loading than the plate, and the more likely to be loaded chair, the intramodal in name. And also secondary bone healing, which is exuberant callus and the physical and the some metaphysical fracture can be indicated and used. So the intramodal nail can provide the stability, bending stability, axial stability, transitional stability, and also rotation stability. The intramodal nail uh, uh, generally utilizing in closed and indirect or minimal over reduction technique also greater preservation of soft tissue uh, as comparing to the upper reduction and tenor fixation. The intermodal reaming has been shown to stimulate the fracture healing and expanding the indication uh, for the reaming intermodal is accepted in many open fractures. And this is an example of uh, intermodal nails. So what about the development of intermodal nail? We have a first generation, second generation, and third generation, and uh, the recent one. So in the first generation, it was, was acting as a splint, and uh, about the rotation and stability minimum, and it, it is closely fitted to the modality, and there is a longitudinal slot along the entire lens. Example of this, like key nail, V nail. The second generation with uh, locking screws, improving the rotation and stability, and always it is non-slotted like Russell, uh, Russell, Russell Taylor, Taylor nail and the Delta nail. The third generation fit anatomically, uh, aid insertion and stability uh, uh, using titanium alloy like uh, trigon nails and uh, universal femoral nail, and also the tibia nails with the manual fixation. For classification of intramodal nail, we have uh, uh, two types of classification, either from the entry point with like central modality like K nail or kefalo modality like gamma nail and Russell, uh, Russell, uh, Russell Taylor and the condylocephalic endo nail. Also from the direction of the entry, like anti-gliding uh, or anti-grade or retrograde nailing. Also now we have ex uh, extensible nail and like telescopic implant using in some bone disease like osteogenes imperfecta. And also we have motorized ent um, intermodulary longitudinal uh, intermodulary uh, using for lengthening of uh, the bone. What about the central modulary, uh, central modulary nail? This is the first generation. Central with the modulary canal go for the central part, usually inserted in from the bioformance fossa. It's a proximal looking pole or transverse or oblique in the pretrochanteric. But this nail to be used needed a lesser trochanter to be attached. If it is not attached, it will affect the stability. What about the kefano modulary nail? This is the second generation nail and the uh, more efficient loading transfer than DHS. Uh, short lever arm uh, of the intermodular device decreases the tensile strength on the implant and there was low risk of implant failure. The screw and the bolt inserted kefalo into the femoral head and the neck, and this is an example of this like a gamma nail and the reconstruction nail. The condylocephalic, it is an elastic stable intermodular nail, and primary uh, definitive pediatric fracture care and they depend on what they call three point fixation or bonded nail. Elastic and small, and there is allow micro motion for the rapid fracture healing. And also is flexible inserted through the cortical window. We have many examples of that, like uh, Lutus nail, Rush nail, and uh, Nancy nail. But the character of uh, this uh, type, it is the apex of the curvature at the level of the fracture site. 
the nail diameter must be about 40% of narrowest primary canal diameter. The entry pointed opposite to uh, one another. It is very important in both sides. Using without trimming and the, co uh, com the commonest uh, biomechanical error is lack of internal support. Uh, there is another type which uh, we have an acondylocephalic uh, lithus tibia nail, um, Harris acondylocephalic nail, and others. Also, don't forget about the inner nail, which is a solid pin with oblique tip and uh, with eye and cephalanges at the end, uh, designed for the percutaneous and close treatment of extracapsular hip fraction. Rush nail, which is, uh, was uh, uh, introduced by in USA, intended for the fracture of the diaphysis or metaphysical fracture of the long bone like femur, tibia, and fibula. A pointing tip facilitating the easy insertion, and we have a curve with, uh, at the top, uh, preventing rotation and, and destabilizing the fraction. This uh, type, which is uh, the bonded, it is a C or shaped acting like a spring, principle introduced by, uh, by instrumentation. Many pins are inserted into the bone until jammed within the medullary cavity to provide the compression between the nail and the bone. But the bending movement is neutralizing by the telescoping and the rotation and torsion not prevented. What about the application of intermodular nail? It is, can be applied in the axial fracture of the long bone, high proximal and the low distal fracture of the long bone, floating hip, floating knee, floating elbow, aseptic and aseptic non-union, osteoporosis, pathological fracture, open fracture up to the grade 3A. The contraindication for intermodular nail is a narrowing and anomalies of the medullary canal because we cannot passing the nail in the medulla. Also, overgrowth plate can be affected. And the period, if you have an amal union which uh, uh, obstruct, obstructed the passing of the nail, preventing the nail from uh, in placement. History of intramodular infection can be a contraindication or relative contraindication associated with lateral femoral neck or a stable fracture, it is a relative contraindication. This is the difference between the solid and the, the, um, uh, the uh, elastic nail, uh, not occupying the full width of the medullary canal if the solid, but this is a nail with elastic crossing section adjusted to the construction of the medullary canal. This is an example of the second generation of cross Kempf, Russell, Russell Taylor, and the Brooke uh, Will, uh, Wills name. The biomechanical, uh, when placing uh, the intramodular nail, the nail act as internal splint with load sharing character. Various types of loading acting on the intramodular nail, uh, 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 which uh, we have uh, torsion, we have compression, we have tension, and we have bending. Physiologically, loading is a combination of all these force. So the, the nail, the intramodal nail can provide the rotation stability, compression and distraction stability. Also, if you're looking for the, the bending forces and the nail, the distance from the forces to the implant is shorter than in the intramodal nail than in the plate. So the bending moment for the plate greater due, uh, due to the force being applied over a large distance from uh, in the plate. Also, the uh, comparison, the nail cross section, the resistant load equally in all direction uh, because it is circular. But in the blade, the cross section rectangular resisting uh, the load on one plane versus the other, which uh, which which uh, can be uh, cannot be resisted. The intermodular, the intermodular nail, uh, the material, it, uh, the elasticity uh, we use the titanium. The titanium alloy has a modular of elasticity closer approximately that of the cortical bone. Module, uh, modules is ability to resist the deformation and tension. Also the cross section uh, shape uh, uh, of the nail diameter determining its bending and the torsional strength, resistance of the structure to torsion or twisting forcing is called polar, polar movement of inertia. Circular nail, has more movement of inertia proportionate to its diameter. So increasing is the diameter, giving a good puller. In, in, a, squ uh, in a square nail, it's proportionate to the edge of the lens. This is the difference between the blade and the intramodular nail. The, uh, the concept of fixation is splinting compression, but in the intramodular nail is splinting. 
and uh, there is the position, the tension, and the compression. This is uh, the tension is intramedullary. What about the interlocking nail in the cortical the uh, con uh, cortical con uh, contact? The compression load boring by the bone to the cortex. This is in the plate, but in the nail, the compression load transferring to the interlocking screw, and we have a four point bending of the screws. So it is a shear pin. The cross diameter is very important. Threaded depth is not the critical feature. Minimum screw pull out load. What about the idle intermodal nail when you are uh, looking for the nail? You're, you're looking for this uh, advantage. Uh, we need a, a strong and stable and uh, maintain the alignment and the position, prevent rotational, uh, the presence of interlocking transfixing screws. Promote the union, uh, like by contact compression force at the as a fracture site, accessibility for easily removing. What the, what I, the, inter, uh, the intramedullary nail set? If you're looking for the set, you're looking for a simple instrumentation set. The number of instrumentation are minimum, uh, minimum, simple to use, minimize the number of implants needed for a full inventory. Giving size of the implant, the strength should be as high as possible to avoid the implant failure. It is desirable to ma uh, maximize the flexibility of the implant and to facilitate the insertion without comminution of the bone. So when you are going to prepare for the intramedullary nail, you need a prerequisite. This, uh, you need a, a adequate preoperative planning, patient tolerating to a major surgery. So you have selected your patient. Availability of the nail for of suitable length and diameter has to be available. Suitable instrumentation and train this assistant and optimum hospital condition. Also, close nailing technique whenever possible, it is advisable. So this is a, 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 the indication and the photo show the type of the fracture, like a comminuted fracture, a sagittal fracture, comminuted intertrochanteric and the non-union. So we will go just for, uh, for the nail. If you have a, a transverse fracture, you need a standard intermodal nail, non-commuted non mid shaft fracture uh, for a non-commuted mid shaft. This is the first generation. The second generation will enter local fixation. You use for community shaft fracture, uh, subtrochanteric fracture at distal third fracture. Uh, for reconstruction, uh, reconstruction fixation, we reconstructed the, uh, the uh, com combination of the sh shaft and the neck, intertrochanteric fracture, combined intertrochanteric and subtrochanteric fracture, and also used for reconstruction following tumor resection. So the preoperative planning for uh, patient, you need for the three things. You need pipeline pi radiographic imaging, which is very important to know what to know the bone morphology, to know the canal dimension, fracture uh, personality, is there, is there is comminution or not, and the fracture extension, if it is maybe uh, hidden. Also, you have to prepare for uh, the length of the nail. Radiographic control, uh, uh, contralateral femur, uh, and you have to uh, consider the magnification. Also, the traction, Radiography in, in case of comminution fracture or commuted fracture. Probably the greater trochanter to the lateral epicondyle, but for the tibia, it's tibial tubercle, uh, medial malleolus distance for the tibia nail. What about the diameter? It is very important, and you have to measure the nearest part of the femoral canal as the uh, isthmus, which is uh, always can be done by in the lateral radiography. Also consider that one or 1.5 millimeter greater diameter than anticipated the nail diameter. So the nail length, which is, uh, 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 you have to be prepared pre-operative radiography of the fracture wrong bone with proximal, uh, with proximal and distal joint is very important to, to joint above and the two views. AB radiography of the opposite normal limb at a, a tuber distance of one millimeter, not more to avoid the magnification. And we have some measurement um, uh, devices like puncture measurement devices, uh, which is uh, osteometer using to measure the, uh, the uh, lens and width and the magnification is taken into account. 
biomechanically, biomechanical stability determined by three, by these uh, five points. The nail design, the number of, and the orientation of locking screws, the distance of locking screws from the fracture site, reaming or non reaming, and the quality of the bone. Intermodal nail assumed to, to bear most of the loading initially, gradually transfer it to the bone as a fracture healing. So, what about nail design? The nail design is a factor contributing to the biomechanical profile. In the material properties, uh, the type of material, cross section uh, shape, diameter of the nail, the curvature of the nail, the length and the working length, and the ends of the nail. So, for the material properties, the titanium alloy and the 316 uh, IV uh, stainless steel. It is a, a material of choice for the internal nail. What, what about the modules of elasticity? Titanium alloy is the same as cortical bone, but stainless steel is twice as a cortical bone. What about the cross-section shape? Determines the bending and the torsion and strength. The polar moment of the uh, inertia, the circular nail against the diameter, the square nail against the edge of the lens, and the high in the nail with the sharp corner or floating edge. This is an example of the nail which is uh, available the, during the history, the shinder nail, diamond nail, and uh, until uh, cross uh, camp. And this is according to the years, which is um, early recorded and century, and according to, uh, 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 lastly, the, the type of the diameters. We have to consider that if we have an a slot nail or non slot, why? Uh, with the open section nail, there is a reverse of the direction of the torsion stress, as shown in the arrow. This is the one here, so the stress will go back. But in close the hollow, the nail, the nail stress line are in the same direction because of the continuity, and therefore the nail is stronger against torsion. Also, don't forget the nail diameter. The nail diameter affected the bending rigidity. A solid circular nail it has bending rigidity uh, against the third power of the nail diameter. Torsion rigidity and the fourth power of the diameter. The large, the large diameter with the same cross section are both stiff and stronger than the smaller one. And also the nail diameter, as, uh, assessing the modality canal diameter in interval and the lateral view uh, both sides, very important. Preoperative radiography by using the template provided. The canal must be reamed uh, to at least one millimeter to accept it, nail less than uh, one, this one millimeter. This is an example of the cross section for open nail and the closed nail. Nail curvature, very important because we have, uh, if we look into the anatomy of the femur, we have a curvature. The long bone have a curved medullary cavity, nail con contoured to accommodate the curve of the bone, straight and uh, uh, straight, curved, or average radius of the curvature of the femur is 120 plus or minus 336 uh, uh, centimeter. Complete congruency minus the normal force and hence a little friction component to the nail fixation. Femoral nail designed to have a considerable less curvature with the radius ranged from 150 to 300 centimeters. And Ramadan nail is straighter, larger radius than femur. Why we, we need this curvature? If we have the mismatching in the radius of the curvature, this will lead to the distal anterior cortical perforation and the more reaming required during the insertion of the nail. So in the tibia, we have uh, at the angle of Herzig, which is about 11 uh, degree uh, uh, bend as the uh, anterior direction as a junction of the upper third and the lower two third of the tibia. What about this, what we call the uh, 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 stress? This is stress circumferential expansion stress during the nail. A lot, this is uh, um, uh, this is stress is very important when you're introducing the nail. The hop stress we can reduce it by what? By using a flexible flexible nail over reamed entry hole by 0.5 to one centimeters and uh, uh, selection of either entry point. 
So to avoid it, the stress, why, why this is can be shuttering the, this, uh, the proximal part of uh, the femur. So if you go posterior when you are entry point, the loss of the proximal fixation, but the iden is the posterior portion of the piriformis fossa. Anterior is generating a huge force can leading to piercing of the proximal part in, of the greater trochant. What about the nail length? It is very important. We have two things. We have total nail length, length and we have working length. The total length is this is the total, the, the total length of the anatomical length of the femur, the intramodular nail itself, which is measured from the greater trochanter to the intertrochanter recline. Working length is this is the length between the proximal and the distal point of a firm fixation of the bone. So the working length is very important, uh, 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 affected by various factors. This factor can, the type of the force in the bending and torsion, type of the fracture commuted to assemble, interlocking or and dynamization, reaming or non-reaming, and also the weight bearing. The nail length is, uh, is the shorter, the working length is a, uh, is a stronger fixation. Transverse fracture has a shorter working length than commuted fracture. So that's why the torsion stiffness and the bending stiffness is equal. Surgeon technique uh, to modify it by intramandana reaming and interlocking fixation. What about the, extre uh, the extreme ends of the nail? It, uh, it is uh, in the key nail, we have a slot, uh, a slot I, uh, a hollow for the interlocking nail, and some nail have a slot nearer the distal end of uh, for blessing of the anti-rotational screws. For anterior slot improving the flexibility, the posterior slot increases the bending stress, no slot increasing the torsional stiffness and the strength is a smaller size. Looking the screw of the nail, we recommend it for most cases of intramodular nail and the principle uh, is to resist to the axial and the torsional force depending on the screw bone interface. The length of the bone maintain even in the, if there is a bone defect. What about the number of interlocking locking screws? Fracture, this depends on the fracture location, the amount of fracture comminution, the fit of the nail within the canal. Placing a screw in multiple planes uh, this will lead to reduction in the uh, reduction of the minor movement. The looking uh, of the distal screw affecting the biomechanical fracture. If you have a distal screw closer to the fracture side, this less cortical contact increases the stress on the looking screw. That's why the distal from the fracture side, the fracture become more rotation stable. And the looking screw position at at least two centimeters from the fracture provided sufficient stability. Uh, the pull out strength, the larger diameter of the screw, which can be used, is limited by the diameter of the nail. So if you have a small diameter nail, so you need a small interlocking screws. Increasing the diameter of the screw, reducing the cross section of the nail as a whole and their uh, uh, and thereby predisposing to the failure of the intramodular nail. What about the technique we use for insertion of interlock uh, of locking screws? We have a freehand technique. We have nail mounting uh, tools. We have guided attached to the C arm. We have technical based on the C arm imaging analysis and computer navigation and the self locking nail. But most of the surgeon using the freehand technique. So uh, what, what is a, a polar or plucking screw? This is a, a type of screws you be inserted, aiding in uh, direction of the nail. This helping for correcting the man alignment and always uh, central, uh, helping in centering the intermodular nail. The planed and inserted before the intermodular nail insertion and the sagittal or coronal plane uh, can be inserted. This is an exa example of polar or plucking screws uh, for the distal when you are inserting for the distal third of the fracture due to widening of the medulla. And this can be leading to uh, uh, due varus or valgus of the distal fragment. So uh, inserting of the polar screws or plucking screw prevents this, helping in centralize of the nail. When the mal alignment is developed during the insertion, placing of the block 
blocking or polar screws, uh, uh, screw and the nail reinserted in improving the alignment. The most reliable in the proximal and the distal shaft fracture of the TB. Uh, uh, a posterior placement screws preventing the anterior angulation and the lateral placement screw preventing valgus angulation. This is an example in the proximal end of the tibia uh, to prevent the virus or valgus displacement of the fracture site. And this is an example if you have an, uh, a short oblique fractures. And this is the distal end of the tibia. And this is the uh, anterior uh, 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 malposition of the proximal part to, uh, and using the block, blocking screws to prevent uh, the angulations. What type of locking? We have uh, two types. We have a static locking and we have a dynamic locking. Dynamic locking also subdivided into primary and the secondary locking. So the, the static locking is a screw placement proximally and distant to the fracture side, like in the, the first generation. Restrict is the translation and the rotation at the fracture side. Act as a bridging fixation. Indicated in the commuted fracture, a spiral fracture, pathological fracture, fracture with bone loss and at a, a trophic man union. This prevented the collapsing of the fracture. Dynamic locking, which is a screw inserted only at one end of the, uh, uh, of, uh, of the uh, fracture uh, in the short segment. Unlocking uh, and stabilizing by snug fit uh, inside the modalary canal in a long fragment. The be requisite at least 50% of the cortical circumference circumferential cont cont uh, contact. Indication of the fracture with good bone contact and non-union. With axial loading, working length is uh, bending and the torsional is reduced, improving the nail bone contact. So dynamization, it, uh, this is uh, 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 some sort of surgical way to enhance the healing. Uh, the, this, but this, the disadvantage is uh, weakening the stability never done in a progressive normal healing, indicated to establish non-union or pseudoarthrosis. Caution, premature dynamization, adding to shortening of the fractures and instability and non-union. We have two types of dynamization. We have primary dynamization, which is done during the primary surgery and using the dynamic lock, uh, locking hole uh, of the axial and the rotation stability fracture as a time of initial fracture fixation. And to have second dynamization, you do it by second surgery by removing the interlocking through from the longer fragment and removing the proximal interlocking through from the static to dynamic slot in the nail. Done in the long bone uh, during delayed union or non-union. This is an example of uh, 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 secondary dynamization. This is an example of the case when there is a fracture the starting to heal and the stable, then we make a dynamization. So what about the reaming? How do you do a reaming for the, for the intermodular? You have to use a sharp reamer, you full speed rotation, but a slow advancement, a limited reaming, a passing reamer limited for, for two to three uh, at the most, number of the time determined the canal size and encouraging the biology. It's very important to remember that the medullary canal, it is not round. It is like an hourglass is then the perfect cylinder. It is not a cylinder, it is round. Reaming is an attempt to make the canal uniformly sized to adapt the bone to the nail. The size of the canal limited the size of the nail. Also, you have a, a, a remember that you are using flexible uh, reaming, which means that it can passing in the canal and it is, uh, but the nail cannot pass. What about reaming versus unreaming? There is a controversy about, and they said that the industrial thermonecrosis and the industrial cortical uh, blood supply disrupted by the reaming, B uh, but the, this minimized can be minimized by using a sharp reamer with deep cutting fluid and also reaming slowly and smooth. The industrial blood supply regenerating rapidly uh, with high rate of uh, in the reaming nail. No difference in the fixture rate between reaming and unreaming. Also no overall difference in the time of healing. What about reaming and versus unreaming? And they, they said that there is a higher chance of 
in, in Buddhism uh, of the one moral fat to the longer, but this phenomena limited and transient. Fat extravasation uh, greater the, during the insertion of the nail in the medullary cavity, no, de uh, no dependent upon the increase of uh, intramedullary pressure. Reaming nail generating uh, repo uh, generally reported no statistical difference in the pulmonary complication as comparing to unreamed nail. Is it uh, can be used in open intramedullary nailing? Can we can use uh, open? Yes, it is can be indicated if we have a primary indication, failure to close the reduction. If you are trying to reduce the fracture and fail, you can do an open intramedullary nail. Also in case of non-union, also fracture required intramedullary existing fixation uh, in internal fixation device. So I can use an uh, intramedullary nail in by open technique. What is the advantage? This expensive equipment required than for closed nailing. No special fracture table or pre uh, preliminary fraction. Abs uh, absolute anatomical reduction can be achieved by open nailing. Direct observation, uh, observation of the, the bone if it is displaced or undisplaced and detected the comminution. Improving the rotation alignment and the stability when you see the, the bone by yourself. Preventing torque and twisting in segmental fracture. In non-union, open of the modality canal of scrotic bone is easily and helping in bone healing. The disadvantage of open intramedullary nail is skin scarring, fracture hematoma evacuated, the bone sh uh, shaving creating uh, by reaming medullary canal often uh, are lost, infection rate uh, more than uh, closed nailing, rate of union can decrease if locking nail is used, locking is difficult without imaging intensifier. What about the nailing in open fracture? Can we use an open fracture? Yes, if initial debridement adequate and the timely, Different stabilization with the reamed intermodal nail can be achieved. We serve soft tissues injury that required a second debridement, temporary external fixation reasonable. Increase the risk of infection after using of external fixation pin longer than a week, uh, than two weeks, followed by reaming intermodal nail. Rapid initial management approaching allow delayed conventional to modalary implant at five to 10 days. Nailing an open fracture can be done by stage nailing. A fracture was delayed in the initial debridement for more than eight hours. Acceptable complication rate, which is uh, uh, account about 11% of the infection rate and in type uh, three open fracture. No relationship between infection rate, non-union with timing of nailing uh, or associated soft tissue injuries. What about aseptic non-union? Can we use intramedullary nail for aseptic non-union? Yes. Without bone defect, primary intermodular nail or excision the nail if uh, uh, we we uh, if well alignment. With bone defect, if we have an a bone defect with a septic non-union, yes, intermodular nail with bone grafting can be done. Also, cortico cancellous grafting material harvest with uh, raya, little donor morbidity. This is an example of raya. What about the exit change nail? The exit change nail by removing the current intramedullary nail, then make a reaming of the medullary canal in replacement of a larger intramedullary nail. The biological effect of this is by reaming of the intramedullary nail, promoting the union. Also, mechanical effect, you change a larger diameter intramedullary nail, improving the stability. Also, exit change nail at least one millimeter larger than the previous nail, and the canal reaming. Uh, until osseous tissues observed in uh, reaming fluid. What about septic non-union? If you have an aseptic non-union, the, the main aim of eradicating the infection. Osseous stability in, uh, important in the management of infection, infected non-union. Stabilization with antibiotic impregnated cemented coated nail after serial deployment. Cemented nail would uh, elude a high concentration of antibiotic in the local site for up to 36 weeks. This is uh, uh, the antibiotic impregnated cemented nail. The material can be used polymethyl methacrylate with two gram vancomycin or vancomycin tobromycin or vancomycin gentamicin according to the cultural sensitivity if you have. 
And this is how to prepare the intramodal, the, the impregnated uh, uh, name by using 40 milligram of bone cement uh, with mixed with the two or two, three gram of the powder, uh, then until become dewy, then you can passing it through the hole according to the, the diameter of the uh, nail, uh, the diameter of the canal you are going to use to be uniformly. This is an example of the impregnated uh, intramodular nail. What about the uh, um, in um, uh, early total hip in, in uh, 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 total care? Uh, uh, in the polytrauma patient, early femoral stabilization decreases the incidence uh, of severe fat embolism and the pulmonary complication, uh, ARDS. Nailing with the reaming will not increase the pulmonary complication. Early intramodular nail may be uh, deleterious uh, uh, de and is associated with ele elevation in certain poly uh, polyinflammatory marker. Early external fixation of the long bone fracture followed by delayed intramodular nail may be uh, in high risk patient. Also, for the 50% decrease in the mortality patient who underwent femoral shaft fracture stabilization beyond the 12 weeks. This timing was a hypothesis uh, to allow for adequate resuscitation. Exact and optimum time of the femoral shaft fracture nailing remain unclear, unclear in polytrauma patient, especially in chest injury. What about the removal? When to remove? This is a controversy. Uh, the indication for that if the patient required after union, uh, you asking, uh, the patient asking to remove the nail or there is a pain or a swelling second to the backing out of the implant, or if there is infected nail. Full weight pairing immediately after removal is allowed. Femoral nail removed as, um, uh, as by, uh, by 24 to 36 months, tibia nail by 18 to 20, 24 months. What about failure of the intramodal nail? When the fracture healed is delayed or non-union can occur and leading to failure of the implant. The intermodal nail usually fail in a predictable pattern. We have different pattern for unlocked nail, which is a normal nail, failure at the fracture side or through the, at the screw hole or a slot, like the, uh, the picture next for that, this one. But, for in the case of looking, looking nail, the screw breakage or fracture uh, of the nail at the locking hole side, the proximal hole of the distal interlocking screws. What about, what, what about the recent advances in the nail? We have a biogradable polymer. This is a new advance. Nickel, uh, nickel titanium shaped mod, uh, uh, modifiable alloy, they can improve the stability as they change the shape after recession and recovery curvature as they want. And we have now intramodular nail coating with BMP. Also, we have uh, this another type, which is the measuring of the force. This is a computerized moment, uh, moment acting across the fracture site immediately after fixation and allow weight, uh, weight is borne by the nail. As the fracture united, the load is shared by the bone and the nail. Investigating the implant loading in vivo, influenced by postural and physiotherapy, loading and change due to the fracture consolidation. The recent one with the intramodulary uh, bone stent, this is made by alloy like stainless steel or shape memorial alloy like uh, Newtonian, inserted in the modulary canal for alignment. Radial, exp uh, uh, radial expansion uh, exert as the circumferential stress as the fracture site, uh, where is the longitudinal contraction restored the, the fracture. Uh, this is an expandable nail, which is, uh, um, which is um, uh, covered the, uh, or fooling the uh, modulary cavity. Now we have a, a new era with the patient specific or somatic implant. You can choose, uh, ch choose the implant according to the anatomical side. Uh, now I am finishing, but we have a still, we have a, uh, a lot of debate and we can discuss later like 
uh, blocking, uh, blocking, should we use a, a nail or uh, another different diameter a nail better than th uh, thick nail or thin nail. And we have a unipolar screws go from medial to lateral. Uh, does the fibula need it to, uh, to be plated when nailing uh, of the tibia? If so, which first uh, uh, hand spreads the roads? And uh, um, the uh, take home message, intramodular impl uh, is an implant of choice in the physical fracture. Multiple uh, factors determine the final construct stiffness should be understood and considered when choosing the intramodular nail. Either intramodular nail is, is, is yet to be invented. And this is uh, my uh, uh, reference and thank you for your attention. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor Baha, for this very interesting talk. يعني هو طبعا توك في غاية الأهمية دكتور بهاء بي في ال ال basics of orthopedic practicing. الله يخليك أبطال. سعادتك لازم أي حد يكون فعلا عارف ال ال basics دي مهمة جدا. هو إحنا we have some questions. We have أنا شوفتها هو فيها lots of questions من Professor محمد عبد العال. بس هو حضرتك كانت في في بداية المحاضرة فحضرتك جاوبت على حاجات كتيرة منها وحضرتك بتتكلم. طيب هنقول اسئله دكتور محمد بيه اول سؤال يا فندم طبعا هو دكتور عماد رياض بيشكر حضرتك وبيشكرنا يعني على الجهد المبذول لا شكر على واجب يا دكتور عماد بيه ربنا يجزيكم كل خير يا فندم دكتور أوه. محمد عبد العال اول سؤال ليه داز ذا بايوميكانكس اوف انترلوكينج نيل ديفر بيفور اند افتر ريموفال اوف ذا لوكينج سكروز اه طبعا ما احنا لسه قايلين اللي هي الوركينج بالظبط هي هي الاسئله كلها اتجاوبت بس حضرتك هو دكتور محمد كان كاتبها بدري اي Uh, 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 then is al does the hollowed nail is more stiffer or less than the solid nail which of which is uh, preferred uh, uh, solid uh, solid nail can be bended and they re return back but uh, the uh, the whole uh, the whole one if you bending it is will be break if you are trying to reduce uh, if you try re Allah I mean but uh, the so solid the solid nail it is stiffer but the other one which is lighter and it can be used and uh, give you an uh, strength and we put this measurement uh, for uh, in one uh, according to the diameter and had these three and d4 we mentioned before in my, one of one one of one of my slides تمام هو في سؤال تاني يا دكتور محمد وحضرتك فعلا اوريدي جاوبته يور اكسبيرينس ويز انكارسريتد انترامدلاري نيل بنت انترامدلاري نيل ام بروكن انترامدلاري نيل حضرتك اوريدي اتكلمت على البروكن انترامدلاري نيل يا فندم اه ما هو البروكن انترامدلاري نيل اف ات از نون لوكد ات از اولوز فراكشر ات ذا سايت اوف ذا نون يونيون ذا انترلوكي نيل اولوز فيل ات ذا بروكسيمال اند وين ذا هول اوف ذا سكروز a lot of uh, stress at these screws and they will lead to fracture at the distal end. Yes, sir. سؤال من دكتور باسم على ال antibiotic impregnated nail. هو عايز يعرف خبرة حضرتك فيه فن. إحنا بنستخدمه كتير وفي شركات دلوقتي موفرة لأن بتعمل فيها سلوت من الداخل وبنقدر نعمله وبيبقى hand made. بنحط فيه اللي هو vancomycin و gentamicin. We have the tendon inserted in the fracture after reaming. The important thing in reaming is that you can do the reaming without the membrane that is present in the fracture, which is the cause of the infection. After that, you put the nail with the antibiotic and you can remove it because it will be very soft. Yes, sir. 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 أنا بجيب أنبوبة من أنابيب اللي هي ليها ديفرنت دايمتر فإذا كان النيل مثلا معايا نيل 8 ملي أجيب وهحط نيل 16 أدور على أنبوبة من الأنابيب اللي هي 16 الدايمتر الإنسايد دايمتر 16 وأحط النيل وأدلق فيها أو أحط فيها البون سيمنت فيطلع يونيفورمالي بقص البلاستيك تيوب فيطلع معايا النيل أحسن من أنا بعمله زي الشيش كباب اللي بيتعمل دي. Uh, some of other colleagues is, uh, is asking about the working length of the nail, sir. The working length, and we have the true length. This is the length of the nail from the greater to counter to the epicondyle. The working length from the distal screws, from the, uh, the distal one of the proximal one, and the proximal one of the distal one. This is the working length of the nail. 
طيب هو انا انا ليا سؤال ثاني انا يا دكتور بهاء بيه بعد اذن حضرتك الداينامايزيشن حضرتك البريفيرد تايم فعلا يعني انا بشوف حالات يعني سم اوف اور كوليجز عاملين لها داينامايزيشن بعد 6 مانثز يعني لا العين بدا يدخل في ديلايد يونيون فراح جه عامل داينامايزيشن Do you do you think that dynamization after six months will give results? And then, uh, after, uh, if you have some colors and you, you need to enhance this, you can do it. But uh, I think after six months, I think it is a uh, uh, it is a matter of uh, we yes. are now we are for non-union. So yeah, I think بالضبط. It is late union in the meko non-union. بالضبط يا فن. You need uh, to to be grafting or nail exchange with grafting, or you can use. نيل اكس تشينج رايا وز نيل اكس تشينج يس سر يس سر يعني هو احنا في النهايه طبعا بنشكر حضرتك شكر جزيل يا دكتور بهاء بيه ويعني <تصفيق> يعني معلش حضرتك تعبت في موضوع اللينك ده فاحنا شاكرين افضل حضرتك وتشريف <تصفيق> حضرتك معانا يا دكتور بهاء بيه دكتور بهاء <تصفيق> بيه طبعا من من العلماء المشهود لهم بالكفاءه والجداره في جمهوريه مصر العربيه وفي العالم العربي وفي العالم كله يعني فطبعا شكر جزيل على تشريف حضرتك يا استاذنا ان شاء الله الجدول بتاعنا في الشهر ده هيبقى الجمعه الجايه ان شاء الله دكتور حسام الشافعي من اسكندريه الجمعه اللي بعدها ان شاء الله دكتور ايمن سوريال من انجلترا الجمعه اللي بعدها ان شاء الله دكتور وليد قشطه من كندا وبعدين حتى توالى بقى لحد شهر رمضان كل عام وحضراتكم بالف خير شاكرين يا استاذنا وجزاك الله كل خير يا دكتور بهاء بيه السلام عليكم شاكرين على الدعوه شكرا سلام عليكم شكرا جزيلا يا فندم شكرا يا فندم عليكم السلام الله يبارك فيك صباح الخير يا فندم Awesome.